Tensions in the South China Sea and the growing U.S.-China trade war are likely to top the agenda at a meeting of Asian leaders in Vietnam. The World Economic Forum will also look at how the growing workforce around Asia can compete with automation and artificial intelligence. Almost a thousand people will attend the event in Hanoi. Well, let's get more on this now. Our correspondent Wayne Hayes joining us live from Hanoi. So tell us more, Wayne, about the theme uh, for this event. Yes, well, as you mentioned, uh, Elizabeth, this is the World Economic Forum on ASEAN. So it's about the association of Southeast Asian nations, and it's all about technology. The theme, officially anyway, from the World Economic Forum is the fourth industrial revolution, and it's about artificial intelligence, it's about robotics, 3D printing, other technological advancements that this region can potentially take advantage of. Well, with me now to talk more about this is Dorji Sun, a social entrepreneur with Berlin. Thank you for talking to us. I mean, how well placed are the nations in this region to take advantage of these advancements? Very well placed. So ASEAN is very youthful. It previously was very fragmented, so there hasn't been a single big company, say like an Amazon becoming a trillion dollar business or an Amazon and Apple becoming a trillion dollar business. So there is this huge opportunity for young entrepreneurship to kind of bubble and uh, experiment. Uh, you talk about decentralization as being a key to taking advantage of these advancements. That's a big problem potentially for these nations when you talk about decentralizing something that's been very centralized for a very long time. Yeah, so when you look at the World Economic Forum historically, it's about the large companies and how they interface. Um, and when you look at peak centralization, and that's where a lot of power and money accumulates to a few big companies. Most of the technologies being covered here really focus on accelerating that. So if you look at AI, you look at Google, you look at self-driving vehicles, you look at Uber and Grab. And then what's really interesting about the countervailing force is actually decentralization and distribution of that technology, as you see with blockchain and distributed ledger technologies, actually is an opportunity to diversify the base of, of the stakeholders. So what we're doing at Perlin is we take every mobile phone, every laptop, and you're able to generate income by creating a decentralized version of Amazon Web Services. So it's a, a new way to kind of spread the wealth. But are governments ready for that in particular in this region? So I think governments have to deal with so many other crises, whether it's uh, civil unrest, whether it's falling currency, whether it's creating jobs. I think that the beauty of entrepreneurship and the beauty of especially uh, social entrepreneurs is they take a social problem and then they come up with solutions and it's more about asking for forgiveness rather than permission. So I think governments are going to be obviously the final decision makers, but I think a lot of proliferation of innovation is going to occur anyway. Uh, one thing that governments will have to deal with when it comes to things like artificial intelligence and robotics is job losses. Uh, how are they going to handle that going forward? So Mohammed Yunus, the founder of Grameen Bank, actually said that mankind was never actually given a job. It was always entrepreneurial. So when you were a hunter and gatherer, you never like went to a factory and sat down. This is a very modern construct. So I think the burden that most governments traditionally take for social stability about finding jobs is going to have to shift towards the gig economy, the decentralized, you know, they call it universal basic income. There are going to be ways that you can generate income and get access to the internet via your mobile phone or your laptop that hopefully will ameliorate some of these job losses. All right, Dorji Sun, thank you very much for joining us. So certainly an exciting time when you're talking about the economies of this region. Uh, there will be a lot of interest at this forum too uh, with the uh, attendance of Aung San Suu Kyi, the state councillor of Myanmar. She will be taking part in a panel discussion in a few moments, not expecting there to be uh, much comment, if any, about domestic issues in Myanmar when it comes to human rights, when it comes to the Rohingya, uh, despite the fact this will be her first major your public appearance since that damning United Nations report came out last month, which was very critical of her government and particularly of uh, the military uh, for their role in the crackdown against the Rohingya in Rakhine State. All right, Wayne, thank you very much for that. For now, that is Wayne Hay live in Hanoi. Thank you.